Hello and welcome. I am Sachin Brahme with Avaya Serviceability Engineering. In this video, we'll see how to configure batch campaign update in Avaya Proactive Contact. The campaign update feature allows you to mark records as uncallable on the outbound calling lists. There are two types of campaign update features, batch and real time. In this video, we will talk only about the batch campaign update. The call cancel parameter in master.cfg should be set to yes to turn on the campaign update feature. The status flag field in the calling list record is written with a character C to mark that record as uncallable. This feature is typically used where you have an inbound call center also and through the day you would keep having the customers calling into the inbound by themselves. And so if you don't want to call them again, you would need to mark them as uncallable on your outbound calling list in the Avaya Proactive Contact. On the screen is a similar example where you see a client making a call into the inbound call center. The data of who called in is then passed to the call center administrator and then the call center administrator sends up a batch of records in the form of a raw file to the proactive contact telling who should not be called from the outbound calling list. Proactive contact then searches for these records in the outbound calling list and marks them as uncallable. Let's now see how this is configured through the editor application. I log into the editor application, go to the calling list section and click on the calling lists. And I can see the available calling lists on my system. It is important to note that the campaign update has to be turned on individually for every calling list that you want to configure it on. For this demo, I will choose list 44. I'll do a right click and go to calling list details. In here, you will see this section for campaign update. To turn on the campaign update feature, I will check this checkbox and I will choose the update mode as batch. Once I do that, it will ask me the index field to be used. You should choose the same field that was used for the calling list indexing, which is account number in this case. Once I choose that, it automatically populates the other values like start position, length and data type. It actually pulls these characteristics of the account number field from the download dictionary itself. Also, there are two more options for any custom scripts that you may want to run before and after the file transfer. Typically used if your raw file for batch campaign update is not in the expected format and you want to run a custom script to change the format of the raw file to the expected format. I will leave these blank here. Once this is done, I will click on save and save it in pending mode. These changes will be made live after the next maintenance cycle. So now after the nightly maintenance cycle, you can see that the list is active. On a notepad file, I have also noted the account numbers of the customer records that we will be marking as uncallable in this demo. This file will be sent to the proactive contact and will be used by the batch campaign update process. So you can see these are 10 character values and the settings here on the right hand side mean that while reading this file, it will start at the zeroth position, that is the first character and will read 10 characters in total. Also, these should be separated by line feeds so that there is only one value in one line. So it's important to have this file created in the correct format as shown. Now we will see how the process works and how the records are marked as uncallable. I have four windows open. The window on the left is showing the account number and status flag values from the list 44. For this demo, I have used a small list with only 16 records. You can see that the status flag fields of all the records is showing a caret symbol, which means that it's blank. And that means that the records are callable currently. The window below it is the same notepad file. And you can see that the four account numbers here are from the list 44 itself. I have already placed this file on the dialer. The location to put this file is as shown on the other window and the name of the file should be data underscore the list number. Let me do a cat on this file. And you can see that it's the same file as we made on the notepad. So now let's run the batch campaign update process. For that, I'll log into the menu system first. 
I'll go to option 2 for calling lists then go to option 5 for edit records and then choose the option for mark records ineligible from host number 7 and then I choose my list which is list 44 number 8 and then it looks for the file that we have placed as shown below it found four records it processed it it updated the records that is the status flag fields of those four records and it's finished now so on the other window let me do the command again to find the status flag values this time and you can see that for those four records the status flag field has now been marked with a character C which means that they have become uncallable now. It's important to note that even if you run the batch campaign update while a job is running these records will not be called anymore. So that means you don't have to rerun your record selection and start the job again. The dialer will take care of this runtime itself and make sure that these records are not called out from this list anymore. And even if later on you run a record selection, these records will not be picked on the selection and hence will not be dialed. So just now we saw how to run this manually from the system supervisor menu. You can actually make it run automatically also from the dialer scheduler. Let's see how to do that. So for this I log on to the editor application. I go to the schedule section, click on activities. Click on new. This will open up the new schedule activity wizard. Click next. And then from the drop down, choose campaign update. Give a brief description. And for your list, choose the list 44 for this example from the drop down. Click next. Then it asks you to specify the start time, the recurrence pattern, etc. So let me set this to daily, every weekday. And I want a hourly repetition of this activity. Duration as 30 minutes. And for start time, let me choose as 7 a.m. And end time as maybe 10.30 p.m. So this means that this activity will run every day, every weekday, for every 30 minutes from 7 a.m. to 22.30 p.m. I click next and then finish. So this way you can configure the batch campaign update process to run automatically from the cron tab. And that concludes this demonstration. Thank you for watching this video. For any questions or feedback, you may write to us at mentor at or at Mentor on Twitter. Thank you for choosing Avaya.